agriculture is central to fostering economic growth, reducing poverty and improving food security in eastern and southern African regions. More than 70% of the rural population depends on agriculture for their livelihoods and poor performance in the agriculture sector has led to constrained regional economic growth. Food insecurity is a significant challenge for most countries in the region which are especially vulnerable to economic and climate related shocks that affect food production and distribution systems. Investing in research to improve small-scale agriculture can effectively meet the food security needs of vulnerable populations, especially women and children, while building economic livelihoods. Research has substantial potential to improve food security by identifying effective interventions. Cultivate Africa's Future Fund, CALTIAF, a partnership between the International Development Research Center of Canada, IDRC, and the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, ACIAR, leverages on the strengths and resources of research organisations to improve overall food and nutrition security across Eastern and Southern Africa. The partnership represents a 35 million Canadian dollars, equivalent to 37 million Australian dollars investment between 2013 and 2023. The main objective of CALTIAF being to improve food and nutrition security in Eastern and Southern Africa by funding applied research to develop and scale up sustainable, climate resilient and gender responsive innovations for smallholder producers in Ethiopia, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Uganda, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Innovative business models that empower women and youth to scale out innovations that bring equitable benefits to smallholder farmers and consumers have been developed. Research results have been used to inform policies on food safety and to develop climate smart tools that smallholder farmers can employ to become resilient to climate change, among other achievements. Malawi. In Malawi, post harvest losses were massive. A record three out of ten fish were always lost through traditional post harvest processing techniques. Advanced adaptable technologies as solar tent dryers and smoking kills for fish that are environmentally friendly, effective and economically viable developed by Malawi's Chancellor College, the Fisheries Research Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, World Fish Centre and the Malawi Bureau of Standards in Phase 1. For greater access to the technologies while in Phase 2, the project developed a gender-inclusive financing solution with FDH Bank that offered a 2% reduction in interest rates, especially for women, the aim being to scale up the improved fish processing technologies that would improve food security and income for the value chain actors. With that, only 0.8% of fish have been reported to be lost when using solar tent dryers compared to 11.3% when using open-air sun drying. An 80% profit-making probability was assured, with fish processors making up to 634,000 Malawian kwacha, approximately 1,215 Canadian dollars per month. Three women and three men got loans to construct six solar dryers, five smoking kilns, and two warehouses for storage of the processed fish products. The project also developed two standards for fish products one went to World Trade Organization and with this combined with bulking and improved packaging provided access to formal markets and finance linkages through cooperatives. As technology changed the fortunes of fishermen in Malawi, Uganda was grappling with micronutrient deficiencies. Women of reproductive age and children under five years were anemic and had zinc deficiencies, resulting in poor growth. The project was run by Makerere University, National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, McGill University and Nutrial, addressed issues of increased availability, accessibility and consumption of underutilized small fishes to boost the micronutrient deficiencies. Just like in Malawi, Appropriate technologies like the solar tent dryers were introduced, 
that tripled the shelf life of dried small fish mokene from eight weeks to five months, doubling incomes for women processors to two Canadian dollars per kilogram, up from one Canadian dollar previously. Nutrifish project also trained fishermen as champions to improve the quality and profitability of their catch. Fisherfolk purchased 500 well-partitioned boats to better handle fish and retain the best quality standard. Overall, the project managed to reach close to 600,000 fish consumers thanks to innovative business models promoted by the project. Innovative business models were also tested by researchers in Kenya to find out what works in building successful youth-led agribusinesses. The United States International University Africa, USIU Africa, partnered with the Busara Center for Behavioral Economics and the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization to make a difference in the lives of the youth. They assessed the value of combining training, mentoring and startup capital in building successful youth-led businesses and exploring the influence of gender and other factors on business growth. USIU hosted a business training and mentorship program, the Metro Agri-Food Living Lab, at its Global Agribusiness Management and Entrepreneurship Center, Game Center. The Living Lab model offered trainings on value addition, online marketing, and financial record keeping. Agripreneurs enhanced their confidence and skills in various value chains, such as poultry, vegetables, dairy, potatoes, fish, wheatgrass, rabbit farming, and silkworm. As a result, the replicated effect has also benefited an additional 15,000 youth as employees, suppliers, and peer mentors, and monthly sales increased by more than 10,600 Kenyan shillings, approximately 120 Canadian dollars. In Kenya and Uganda, the effectiveness of public-private partnerships and gender-responsive financing is responsible for the expansion and use of pre-cooked beans. Beans are an important protein source, but the time it takes to cook poses a challenge for water use, fuel wood, and limits its consumption, especially in urban areas. In the project's first phase, spearheaded by Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, the National Agricultural Research Organization in Uganda, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, Lasting Solutions Limited, Community Enterprises Development Organization, Smart Logistics and Caritas developed a bean product that was found to improve food and nutrition security, increase household incomes, conserve the environment and reduce cooking time. To solve seed availability challenges, the collective seed production model was introduced in Uganda and some 1,143 metric tons aggregated earning the farmers 831,460 Canadian dollars from the sales. The project collaborated with several processors to develop several products such as quick cooking bean flour, bean noodles, bean chunks and ready-to-eat bean snack currently found in some supermarkets, hotels, restaurants, roadside kiosks and food vendors across 23 new districts in the two countries. Time saved is now used in other productive activities and income used to access various services as health and education and better housing. Production of quality livestock requires quality animal feeds. However, the cost of feed constrains poultry, fish and pig production and undermines a growing demand for animal protein in sub-Saharan Africa. Proteins such as soybean and fish meal account for 70% of the cost of animal feed. This challenge can be countered by use of insects, specifically the black soldier fly for this project, as an alternative and sustainable protein source for animal food, as well demonstrated by the InSweed project undertaken by the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology, ISIPE, in Kenya, and Makerere University in Uganda. Farmers were trained on insect rearing techniques along with development of gender-responsive insect feed supply chain models. With standards on feed safety developed, 
Insfeed worked with more than 100 small and medium-sized enterprises who can now produce up to 3 tons of fresh black soldier fly larvae each week. In Kenya, some of the enterprises produce over 60 tons of dried black soldier fly larvae per month. This is processed into various animal feeds and organic fertilizers as well as other insect products that are well packaged and sold and has created some 1,200 jobs across Kenya for youth and women. It is a dream of every farmer to produce not only healthier animals but also healthier crops. But climate change has twisted an ideal narrative. In Kenya, like elsewhere in sub-Saharan Africa, floods and droughts have become a challenge for farmers and innovations that can hedge farmers against loss can make an enormous difference in the livelihoods. Crop insurance offers a way out. It can be a sustainable approach to unlock investments in agriculture and improve farmers' resilience and productivity. Picture-based insurance, PBI, an innovation implemented by the Agriculture and Climate Risk Enterprise Limited, the International Food Policy Research Institute, Wageningen University, and the Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization is a crop insurance that protects farmers against financial risks posed by extreme weather events. It relies on images taken by champion farmers on their cell phones and satellite imagery posted on the See It Grow app to show crop damage. It's a transparent way of assessing loss, building trust between farmers and insurance providers to increase adoption of insurance products. Since its inception in 2019, PBI has covered 8,480 farmers, 65% of them being women. To date, more than 4,000 farmers have received insurance payouts. Insurance cover worth 200 Kenya shillings provides a payout of up to 2,000 Kenya shillings which helps farmers, mostly women and young people, recover their initial investment paid to buy seed and reinvest in their farms. Recovery of farmers is critical. Fruit farmers have stared at losses when fruit flies ruin fruit farms. Farmers lose 7 out of 10 mangoes from fruit flies that also reduce the quality of fruits and constrain access to markets. Using synthetic insecticides for pest management is unsustainable due to price and environmental and health risks to human health. To address these challenges, ISIPE and partners in Zimbabwe, Malawi, University Eduardo Mondlane in Mozambique and the Zambia Agriculture Research Institute scaled the Fruit Fly Integrated Pest Management IPM package, testing it in several locations in Southern Africa. The project reached up to 9,000 mango growers providing farmers with technologies as biological control parasitoids, bait stations, a small container hang on a mango tree that holds food bait for fruit flies and reduces the male populations significantly. A tent-like structure called an augmentorium is used to hold fallen infested fruits, killing the fruit flies in the process. Dealing with the menace led to good quality mangoes and with the added benefit of value addition using a drying basket which takes half a day to dry mango pulps on a warm day. Farmers now get better income from selling fresh mangoes from as much as 6,000 to 11,500 Zambian kwacha, approximately 430 Canadian dollars to 825 Canadian dollars. A regional network was established and currently has over 500,000 mango farmers. This opened up possibilities to access lucrative international export markets for fresh fruits. And that has excited the smallholder farmers. In Mozambique, more than 3 million smallholder farmers provide 95% of agricultural production, yet yields have remained low. To build resilience to climate change, boost production, increase food security and reduce poverty. The government has over the past 25 years invested in revitalizing and expanding smallholder irrigation schemes on 200,000 hectares of land. To support better irrigation, Eduardo Mondlane University and the National Institute for Irrigation implemented user-driven approaches like soil and water management technologies to improve on productivity, 
profitability and equity of government-funded and farmer-led smallholder-led irrigation schemes. They also trained smallholder farmers and extension officers on improved crop management practices, land preparation, optimum crop density, pest control, and the adoption of water-efficient innovations by use of water monitoring tools, where farmers were able to cut water usage by half, reduced irrigation costs by 40%, and doubled productivity. Climate extremes are also experienced in Ethiopia. Ethiopia's lowlands is a recurring story of devastating effects of drought on people and livestock. Sorghum has always saved the hunger pangs. 70% of sorghum grain is consumed at household level or used as forage, fuel and building material. Sadly though, about 30% of it is lost to poor storage and processing technologies. To address these challenges, the Ethiopian Institute for Agricultural Research and the University of Queensland, Australia came together to find solutions for the farmers by intensifying breeding and supplying improved early maturing, high biomass and drought tolerance sorghum varieties like Ajiti, Fedis and Melkam. The project reached close to 9 million farmers, equipping them with skills, tools and technologies to increase production and better market linkages through value addition in the injera chain, increasing economic opportunities for women. Better technology has led to an increase in production from 2.7 tons to 4.2 tons per hectare now, while the use of re-engineered threshers that can thresh half a hectare of sorghum grain in one hour compared to a whole day previously has saved women time that they can use for other productive activities. To reduce losses at post-harvest, the farmers were introduced to Padu improved crop storage bags, three layered bags that prevent oxygen from reaching the crop inside, keeping it fresh for up to six months when it can fetch better prices, thus improving the economic well-being of approximately 240,000 rural Ethiopians, particularly women and children. The diverse achievements from nutritional value addition, post-harvest storage technologies, crop insurance, irrigation, and women and youth entrepreneurship, innovative business models, private sector engagement, and policy development are testament that it is possible to deliver on food security using both simple and complex innovations for lasting impact. As Calti Af2 winds down this year, it is evident that applied research can generate practical, lasting solutions that are economically viable, socially acceptable and environmentally sustainable.